Okay, hi guys. Uh, weird last night, yesterday, two of our towers went down, which is, we're out in, like, rural northeast Texas. Uh, there was a storm that seemed to go around us, but I didn't think that it was that bad. But it actually took down, I guess, two of the towers. Uh, we were able to call Verizon, and they just, you know, they left, had those automated messages. So for anyone that I was supposed to talk to, I'm sorry I was not being rude. Uh, I did send out, I think, one roaming message, but I have no idea how much those cost, and, you know, I try to keep my costs down. But uh, we'll get back with you today and reschedule for everybody. Uh, do you have one tonight and possibly a reschedule with G-Men, I hope. Uh, but anyway, there's that. And it was actually down for almost 24 hours, if you can believe that. I don't think I've ever seen anything down that long here, or ever heard of one for that matter. But anyway, I wanted to come on because I wanted to talk about uh, a few things on getting to 5D. And this is in regards to money. Now, um, I'm not really good at the energy of money, but I'm because I, it's hard for me to understand the way that was set up on this planet with the energy exchange being controlled through something like a, a dollar bill or a credit card. Um, that's kind of a, a unique setup that isn't around, like many things in this game are very, very unique to this game. That is one of them that's very unique to this game. It is very complicated why it was set up that way in order to facilitate getting this planet to the third dimension. As you come out of it, because it is not my expertise, it is certainly not, I'm not the best person to talk to about it. I uh, worked on it for years and years, and for me, uh, I do know that the more you interact with the game and the energies of the game, uh, the harder it is to get out of the game. So here you are caught in this mid-space of you need to have a place to live and everything on this planet costs money. So how do you work within the system but get out of the system? That walk has to be individual to you because you're the only one that's in that situation and only you can figure out how you're going to um, get out of it, how you can do out, get out of it. Now with me personally, what I opted for was to reduce my need for the game. Okay, started to lean way more on to Gaia herself. As the process of getting down into third dimension, people are under the impression that civilized man, that, that our industrial age and the uh, making of stuff, um, that that led to enlightenment. It was an age of enlightenment, and that is simply not true. That is how we got to third dimension, which opened up a whole bunch of lower vibrations that could be lived in human form. But that is enlight isn't enlightenment. Enlightenment is more working with, in conjunction, smoothly within the people, places, things, and beings that are around you. Okay? So the more enlightened peoples would be uh, the smaller groups, that live more like nature lives. So they take just what they need, uh, operate within what's going on in, on, the, in the, on the planet where they live. Uh, they use the things that, they are, that are around them. They don't interfere. They work with, with in and out, in and out kind of thing. So a lot of the nomadic tribes were really, really good at this. As they would go where they needed to go, they knew you know, when the salmon were running, so to speak, and they'd go pick up salmon and smoke the salmon and, and it would last for a while. So they work within, they didn't um, tear up the planet to build permanent dwellings that would interfere with the way things flow in that area, but rather they became a part of the flow, or they were a part of the flow. And then mankind broke away from the flow and started developing something else. And in that process, uh, that's how they separated from the whole. And then they started separating from each other, of course, because there is a uh, belief out there that there's not enough. There's not enough on this planet. 
so in order to get your fair share you've got to do something to get it and keep it and hold it protect it um, bank it so to speak now the uh, the nomadic tribes back then they didn't do it like that they went with the flow of things and they got as they needed they would prepare as the winters got bad so that they had food throughout the winter and that was the beginning of heading towards 3d by the way before that there was uh, the uh, planetary temperature around this whole planet was such that there was things that you needed a human being needed to eat and drink survive um, year-round but as the conquest to get to the third dimension and those vibrations that were low, one of the things that happened was this um, extreme temperature change. And with extreme temperature change, then you have to start thinking about things like, well, how do you put back food for a winter when there is no food? That, that was the very beginning of that system. It's very complicated, but that was sort of the beginning. All of it's tied together, so there is no beginning, no end, but you know what I mean. All right, so to get back to that, what I personally have opted to do was to try to get back into the flow of things with nature, to um, get what I need from the land itself, to re reiterate to myself over and over again that I'm a god, that I can bring to me whatever I need in the moment. There is no need to panic, there is no need to hoard, there is no need for any of that. So how do I do that? Well, I've just extricated myself from the system as much as I can. And I'll continue to try to do that. Uh, there's a certain amount of it that you can only go so far at this time, but every chance I get, I do it again. Uh, there is so much food in your backyard in the forest that people don't know about. Because in most people's belief system, this is what humans can eat, this is what they do eat, and that's the end of that. Now, you can't go out and walk through the forest and get a pizza and a Coke and, and a pile of french fries. can't do that. But there is edible food everywhere. Everywhere. Literally everywhere that the, the forest is growing. There are animals out there that are ready to go, that you can hunt and eat that are done with their time here and that will make themselves available to you if you are one with the land. Same thing with the fish. Same thing with insects for that matter. So in that coming and going thing in a, in a world where things are not petrified to die, that they're not afraid of what will happen tomorrow, there's an ebb and flow in things. And the plants, the animals, the insects, the fish, they all, they all come and go. Uh, the breaking down of rocks into soil that grows things. It's a big circular um, setup that's pretty darn cool. So my, me personally, I try to get back into that circular setup. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy since I've been raised poor and I've always worried about money. So I try not to think about money. I try to think about being in the here and the now. Um, and I would suggest that you reiterate that you're a god, everything is fine, everything will always be fine, everything can't be anything but fine. Now, you certainly can do it other ways. You can get yourself in such a place that you believe uh, and can go to a place where you win the lottery, and that's what you do. You, you win the lottery, and... Now the money issue is taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. And you can concentrate on the other aspects to get to 5D. Uh, that's a, certainly a good way to go. Uh, there is a reason why so many people are moving out to the country and building homesteads and sustainable and, and repurposing things. And it is that way of disconnecting from a setup and a system that has been uh, set up to keep you in it and it's worked beautifully and it's done exactly what it was meant to do but if you want out of the system then you have to figure out a way of doing that uh, one way is to downsize and the other way is to get more than what you will ever need or you can stay in the now and just go with um, oh, I want that and I know I'll get it because I'm a creator God and it will come and I don't know how but it will come and it will be but the, the key to any of this is to start with that true core belief and understanding that you have
created everything. You will create everything in your life. Period. End of story. Everything. Good, bad, ugly. You did it. Now you're going to do it better. How you do that, how you get it done, will be unique to you. There isn't a one way out, so to speak. You have to walk this walk in your own way. What works for you? Um, now, the other day I was talking, and I was talking about this law of attraction. And I also brought up that the indie ears that are coming back that saw gods or went to heaven or hell or whatever, and they're coming back very adamant that you are not a god. And that is absolutely more power to them. They can absolutely believe in whatever god they'd wish to um, they give the power to. That is absolutely up to them. But from the standpoint, and I had said this the other day on the phone call, it's confusing to me, is the law of attraction, uh, since the secret and before, has got a lot of play. That people are really, really using this vision boards and uh, whatever you intend you get and using that intention. But the only way the law of attraction works, in theory, is if you are in control of everything. So if you're in control of everything, doesn't that make you a god? So as you're working through this, and as you're talking to people, um, I think it's another trap. I think it's another thing that they've, uh, the law of attraction hit the planet. It became very, um, very important, and people were using it well, and they are using it well starting to get control of their lives but then they squashed it like a lot of things in this planet over all of the years is something that's true is matched with something that's not true and it controls that the action of the truth and the action of the truth is the law of attraction works whatever you intend you will get back vibrationally not things vibrationally so the trick is to figure out how to do it vibrationally and that is true, but the reason why it is true is because you are a god. So there's still a lot of people being very uncomfortable with that I am God thing. No, I'm not a god. I'm, I'm not a god. I'm not. Well, yes, you are. And until you really own that and understand that and believe that, it's really hard to step consciously forward towards fifth dimension. It is, it is the number one thing that you have to believe and own in that moment you cannot complain about anyone else ever again ever again no person no place no thing if you are not having the experience that you want in any way whether it's worldwide universal wide in your day-to-day -day life if you're not having the experience that you want it was yours you're the one that uh, created it you're the one that perceives it and you're the one that translated, translates the experience through your perception, it is all about you. And that's the part I think where people just don't want to deal with that. It's too much. It's too much. I can't, I can't look at it like that. Because it is a lot easier to say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I was raised this way. I'm in this country. Um, I'm told to do this. I can't not do this without something bad happen. There's nothing I can do about it. As long as you think like that, you, you simply aren't going to go to 5D. Nothing's wrong with not going to 5D, as I've said many, 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 many times. But in order to go to 5D, you have to truly, truly own that you are responsible for everything in your life. And you always have been, always have been. So is everyone else. So that is up to you. So you have to own this fact that you're a god, and as a god, you can walk out of it in any way that you want. And that has to be up to you, too. You know what the system is. You know where you feel bad and where you don't feel bad. You know what you, what you really need to keep to feel good, and you know what you can let go of. Um, start playing with that a little bit. Start seeing how you can step outside the system. Ultimately, you don't want to be caught up in their vibrational system at all. Uh, there is barter, exchange. There is all kinds of things that you can do yourself, uh, by yourself, to uh, make enough money or exchange for enough stuff to get things done. In the exchange of things that I can do this and you can do that, and let's flip them out, that barter thing is really, really a good way to get to 5D because 
it teaches you, the first place you go into it, I'm a god and I know what I'm doing, and I've got this. So from that perspective, when you go in to barter with somebody, exchange with somebody, make a deal with somebody, then that worry of, well, what if they're crooks or what if I get screwed goes away. Because if you do get screwed or if they are a bad person, then you just go, whoops, I did that wrong. Must have stepped into that with fear and brought the timeline where I got screwed. Well, I'll do it again. Do it better. Because whatever the, ex the experiences that you have is an immediate... Um, telling you exactly how you did it so if you walk into a circumstance and it goes badly if you immediately get angry or jump on the other person or say it's not your fault then you just simply walk to the next event and the same thing can happen if you immediately say okay that didn't go the way I wanted it that was on me what did I do to make it go badly instead of the way I wanted what interfered with that creationary process and you keep doing it and you get it better and better and better until the end result is exactly what you wanted and there is no end result you just keep on doing it okay so however it is you want to get from here to there via money or anything else health family friends uh, whatever is up to you always go to it from the standpoint that you are a creator God that the result that you're seeing in front of you is from you and only you. It's your responsibility. It's your, um, it's your doing in every way, shape, and form. And it's only a matter of, well, is this what I wanted to end up with? If not, how did it get, go wrong and get up and do it again? Okay, get up and do it again. It's just practice, 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 practice. Practice makes perfect. So, then that leads me to something else I'd like to say, and I was realizing this, that with the Law of Attraction, which I love, uh, the Law of Attraction is stupendous, although very, very misunderstood most of the time, that uh, how do you do Law of Attraction and get to the fifth dimension? The fifth dimension has so many things, the majority of the things uh, there, that you don't even understand you can't even visualize you don't know anything about you don't remember them so how do you visualize a place that you don't know anything about and in that I realized that the law of attraction was can be kind of a trap to keep you here and well done genius of them to get that done to bring in law of attraction let you show that you've got some control over the situation that you can make things happen by that intention and then you will get you won't go any further than that won't go any further than that okay so if you're in the law of attraction and you're very caught up in the belief systems and the game here and your belief is that you're doing a good job if you get the stuff the things that they say make a person successful then the law of attraction is going to be very much drawing you into the game and I, you know, they're going to say, you know, create the house of your dreams. So you've got the house of your dreams, the love of your life, the job that you want. Okay, all of those are very fourth dimensional at this point, and they will keep you here. So if that's what you want to do, if you want to play in the fourth dimension and get very good at it using the law of attraction and just practice being the God that you are so that you can remember, it's an excellent way of doing it. Do it moment by moment, stay in the now, look at what you've created, tweak it, go back in and do it better and better and better. And you can reach incredible odds. You can have incredible experiences, fantastic, unbelievable experiences, people, places, and things. That's how you do it. Stay in the now, state your intention, come at it from being a god, period, end of story. You're still a god in fourth dimension. Don't pay as much attention to what they say the rules are. You say, I'm a God, my rules. My rules are whatever I intend happens, and I want this. With intent and with vibration. Not, I want the house, but you've got to feel the house. Being in the house. Owning the house. It's already yours, as far as you're concerned. Once you get the house, it's anticlimactic. When you do it right, when you use the law of attraction right to get what you want, by the time you actually physically get the thing, it is very anticlimactic. You won't have a big party. You won't be surprised because at that point you know like you know like you know that it was already yours anyway. And that's the trick. That's the trick. The trick is to already have that party 
already have it because you've already created it's already yours okay and you can spend the rest of your life in the fourth dimension practicing these things by the time you get to the fifth dimension those are not questions uh, it's not a question you'll have to work on anymore as to whether or not you're a god or not you know it you just know it and you don't you don't use the law of attraction like they do here it's a given like breathing the fact that you're God and the fact that you create based on your intention is like breathing in the fifth dimension. You don't uh, stop and think about it at all. You just, all of your your time and energy is spent more with uh, imagination, creativity. That's what you do in the fifth dimension. You don't worry about, you're no longer collecting, you're not going to art class anymore. You're not collecting paintbrushes you're not figuring out how to hold the paintbrush anymore by the time you get to fifth dimension you're just painting now you're just painting fourth dimension is you're still learning how to paint fifth dimension is you're a full-time all the time don't even think about it painter okay fourth dimension you're still learning to drive the car figuring out the car and, and all of the ways that you can get into trouble with the car how to avoid this be a defensive driver by the time you get to fifth dimension fifth dimension is driving the car without even thinking about it that's the difference so until you can get those fourth dimensional things down you don't even need to worry about the fifth dimension but as going to the fifth dimension and that's the reason why uh, somebody who's going to the fifth dimension does not use the law of attraction to get to the fifth dimension Okay, because you can't. You can't, I can, you can't, but I don't need to. Because you cannot use vision boards, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to develop a law of attraction to get you to 5D. Okay? You can, it's more like law of attraction is moving back and forth within a place. It, that's what law of attraction is for. But to get to the fifth dimension, you become something different. And once you become something different, an understanding of something different, then when you're there, you use the law of attraction in a very different way. You do it very, very, very fast. You do it like you think, like like I said, like you breathe, okay? Here, law of attraction, as you learn to do it, takes a lot of, okay, just like getting in a car, open the car, get in, put my seatbelt on, fix the mirror, fix the mirror, look behind, look behind, start the engine, check the fuel. All that, that's fourth dimension, learning with law of attraction, how to be, a, be the creator God that you are. In the fifth dimension, you don't do any of that. In the fifth dimension, you jump in the car and you go, hello. All right, so then what happens? Sorry, had somebody at the door. Okay, so in other words i want you all to know that the law of attraction is still in play in the fifth dimension but you don't use it per se to get to the fifth dimension you do it so well the law of attraction becomes so easy so commonplace that you don't you but by the time you get to the fifth dimension you're not worrying about how to pay the bills you know the bills are going to be paid or better yet there were no bills that you are in a place and you create to such an extent and so quickly and so well and so easily that you don't have to think about you don't think about that you're God you don't think about the law of attraction you just are and what you want need to experience at any given time is just done and the faster that happens the closer to fifth dimension you are once you step over to the fifth dimension it's done automatically okay does that make sense I hope well, hopefully so. If not, well, as you know, I will try to say it a different way on a different time. Thank you guys for watching. If you would, please subscribe to my channel. Share this channel with other people, friends, places, people, things, and insects and fish. Who knows? They might watch. You never know. And uh, hit the bell. And thumbs up. And, yeah, feel free to comment. Uh, thanks, guys, for being there with me through this. I really, really appreciate it. It's been fun and will continue to be fun. We're now kind of over this little lump where I can actually see massive things changing. Things are feeling a lot better, finally. Finally, finally. 
and now for me the fun starts I can start seeing fun now hope you guys can see it too there's so much out there to see just open those eyes open your eyes kind of relax into it a little bit all right okay guys well I'll see you later love you bunches huge hugs bye now